scriptures. Laboring through partnership. Laboring through partnership. Laboring through partnership. Would you turn to 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter? 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Praise God. 1 Corinthians in, in the 3rd chapter. I want to read to you from verse number 6. Have you found it? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. I want you to look at that again. It says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Now let's go on. So then, neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planted and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Oh, hallelujah. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. Amen. It says we are laborers together. We are laboring in partnership. We are partners in laboring in the kingdom of God. We are laborers together with God. We are laborers together with God. He says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Amen. I planted, Apollos watered, God gave the increase. Now, verse 10. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Praise the Lord. Do you understand this? How many of you understand what we just read? Okay, I'll explain to you. Now he says, I have planted. You know, um, he started this whole thing when um, he referred to the canality of people who were saying, I am of Apollos and I am of Paul. And so he said, come on, uh, who is Apollos and who is Paul? We're well, ministers by whom you believe. So don't be saying, I am of Paul and I am of Apollos. Did you see that? Then he said, I have planted. Apollos watered. The one who plants is not anything. The one who waters is not anything. It's God who gives the increase. He's the one that really matters. In other words, when we work in partnership, because that's what he emphasizes here, he says, for we are laborers together with God. But everyone shall receive his own reward. Look at verse 8. Now he that planted and he that watered are one. Hallelujah. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Everyone shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereupon. But, ev but let every man take heed. How he built it thereupon. He says, I have laid the foundation. In other words, I have laid the foundation of the gospel here. He preached the message. He brought in the message. Apollos now is taking this revelation and is teaching on the basis of this revelation. And people are believing and people are learning. And then the church, some people began to say, well, I belong to Apollos. Some others said, well, I belong to Paul. So he said, no, Paul wasn't crucified for you. He says, we're ministers by whom you believed. He says, I laid the foundation. I planted it. Apollos watered. But God is the one who made it work. God made it produce results in your life. So we're partners together. He says, I have been called as a master builder. And I've laid the foundation. And another one is building on it. Now he says, let everybody be careful how he builds on it. Give you a simple example. 
here is a church. And I am the pastor. I have laid the foundation. I have laid the foundation of the ministry. And we've got leaders and teachers and pastors in this ministry that are building upon this foundation. Now I say to them, there is no other foundation that you're going to be laying here because this foundation is laid and is Christ Jesus. So this is the foundation that has been laid here. You don't need to lay another foundation in this ministry. What you're supposed to do now is to build upon it. Now this is partnership. But be careful how you build on it. Be careful what you preach in your PCF. Be careful what you teach in your cells. Be careful how you communicate the message that you believe you have heard. If you haven't heard it right, go listen to it again until you hear it right. So that you can communicate it right. Do you get that? Yep. So, I've laid that foundation. Like Paul says here, I've laid that foundation. And you can build on it. Now, in partnership... In the first case, you are taking that message. Some of you have got to use the tapes to minister. You didn't preach the message. But you are taking it and transporting. You see, watering is a, a way of transporting the message to go on. You're making the message move from here to there. You're making the message move from here to here. You're making the message go from point A to point B. You're transporting the message. So whether you are saying it with your mouth, or you're taking a tape and delivering it, or you're taking a book and delivering it, you are transporting the message from one point to another, you are watering. And the Bible says, he that planted and he that watereth are one. But every man shall receive a reward according to his labor. It depends on how you have worked with this. So here's another great opportunity for you to be a laborer in the house of God. Get those tapes. Communicate them. Set them out. Deliver them to others. Get others to have them. Get the books. Use them in evangelism. I used to use tracts a long time ago. I'll get the tracts and I'll pass them on. I used to use films. I used a lot of T.L. Osborne's tracts. I used a lot of T.L. Osborne's books. I used his, his tapes. I would go to um, different villages, set up the projector and set the screen up and then the crowd crowds will come there. I didn't preach the message and I put on T.L. Osborne's film and they'll watch and they'll see all those miracles. Maybe the crusade in, 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 the, in the Philippines or in India or uh, in Ghana and some other uh, country. But then I'll show them these films and the people will watch these films and then I'll make a few explanations to them and listen to the message preached by T.L. Osborne and then I pray for them. Hallelujah. That's the way I used to go. I did a lot of all that. I got stacks of, of, of magazines from, from Billy Graham, his decision magazines, and I used them in evangelism. I got cartons of Bibles from the Gideons International to distribute as I went from village to village and town to town and distributed these things to so many people. Are you still here? Yes, I did that. So I understand personal work as a Christian. I understand that. And this is very, very vital. You never get the fulfillment that you get from leading people to Christ. You never get it any other way. There's nothing like it. Hallelujah. There's nothing like it. Being involved in God's number one job is the greatest thing that can get into your spirit and you'll be amazed the kind of fulfillment that you'll have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you're missing out on that, that is something that you should get a hold of now. Get a hold of it. Use these materials. Use them. Use them. That is laboring in partnership. Hallelujah. Laboring in partnership. That's what the man's talking about here. He says, every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. It's not whether you planted or whether you watered that matters. He says, he that planted and he that, that, that watered are the same. It's God who, the one who gave the increase is the one that really matters. Hallelujah. And like I know, one day, there's going to be somebody standing, maybe from that little village, that old village there, preaching the gospel. And uh, as we stand in the presence of God, and the Lord's going to say, T.L. Osborne, you reached that dear woman over there. And he'll say, no, I never went to her village. And the Lord's going to point at me and say, this man took your materials there. And then I get the reward, and he gets a reward. He planted it, I watered it, I transported it. And then this dear lady from that hideout, that sediment, 
backside of civilization, turn to Christ. And here she is in the kingdom of God. And we receive our reward. I get my reward for having done it right. And he gets his reward for having done it right. That's the way. Are you still there? That's the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, they didn't have television programs in those days, but we do now. What are you doing with the TV programs? What are you doing with them? There are opportunities for you to minister. You get people to watch them. You love people to watch them. You tell them about the programs and encourage them. And you know what? You will be leading a soul to a place where he can receive salvation, where he can receive the blessing of God's word, where he can be healed. You are doing that for the kingdom of God. And you are there for a partner. You're a laborer. You're a laborer. Some of you make some of the biggest mistakes of your life. When that program is going on, you are out there visiting with somebody discussing nonsense. And the program is going on. And you stop him from watching and you yourself will not watch it. And you're talking rubbish. Maybe talking about football or talking some other nasty thing. And that program is on. And some dear Christian somewhere paid, gave some money to ensure that that program was aired. Somebody else spent the time and ensure that program was aired. And all of that labor is on there going on in the kingdom of God. And here you are deterring some others from watching the program, moving around, doing all the nasty things that you shouldn't have been doing. Think about it. Are you a laborer or are you working against the kingdom? Who are you really? Who are you? If I were you and I had the shop, I should put the TV there during that program. Take it away after the program. Rather, you say Nigeria versus Guinea. You bring out your TV from your house and put it there for everybody to be watching. In your shop, they are all sitting. Nigeria versus Guinea. And in the kingdom of God, the Lord will never ask you who's God to go. <laughs> Telling you the truth. If you have a shop, you have a place where people come together, get your television set. When it's time for the program, set it up. That is laboring in partnership. What are you doing? Transporting the message. Creating opportunities for the gospel. That's what you're doing. That's what you ought to do. That's what you ought to do. Hallelujah. Yes, that's what you ought to do. That's what you ought to do. Are you a laborer? What are your responsibilities? Someone is helping in setting up the stage. Another person is there sweeping. You should see what we do sometimes when we're working on these things. Go to that stadium auditorium that we use and see. It's a mess. We have brethren here who go there, clean up, wash up the toilets, wash up all those things. And then when you come in, some of you will say, this, this is smelling. <laughs> Where were you all the time? They were washing the place. And after you're gone, they will still go back there to clean. One day, they will stand before the Lord. And he'll be showing them the souls they want. And they'll say, how? I never met this person. The Lord will say, you see, when you were doing that, you made it possible for this person to come in. You made it. You, you know, Jesus said, the day will come when we will stand before him and he will say, I, I was in the hospital and you visited me. I was sick. Did you see that? It's in the book. He says, I was sick and you visited me. And then they will say, Master, when did we find you sick? He will say, when you visited one of these little ones, you visited me. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was a master. Did we ever find you hungry, and we gave you food? He said, in as much as you did it for one of these little ones, talking about his own, he says, you did it for me. Then he would turn to the other ones, those on his left hand. He would say, depart from me, for I was sick, and you did not visit me. I was hungry, and you did not feed me. I was thirsty, you didn't give me to drink. And they would say, Master, we never saw you like that. We never. He would say, in as much as you didn't do it for any of this, you didn't do it for me. Isn't that strong enough? When he spoke to Paul, he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He didn't say, why persecutest thou my disciples? He said, why persecutest thou me? What you do to God's people, you do to him. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lastly, financial and material ministry. There are those who labor financially, materially. They minister from their substance to the Lord. Hallelujah. See, the opportunities that people had in the day that Jesus Christ walked the streets of this world are the same opportunities that are there today for anyone who would believe and who would, who would want to walk with God. I'd like you to turn to St. Luke's Gospel, 8th chapter. St. Luke's Gospel. I've got to wind this thing up quick. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 8. I want to read from verse 1. And it came to pass afterward... That he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. Everybody say the twelve were with him. Good. And seven women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene out of whom went seven devils. And Joanna the wife of Chusa. Herod Stewart and Susanna and many. Now notice and many others. Everybody say many others. Now notice, many others. Now these others were men and women. And which ministered unto him of their substance. They ministered unto him of their substance. Many others who went went with him. And these ministered unto him of their substance. Now he's not talking about the large crowd that followed him. He's talking about those that ministered unto him of their substance. Now there's no big wonder... How the ministry of Jesus went prospering and prospering and prospering. Because there were people who ministered to him of their substance. There are people like that. They are called like that. To minister to the Lord of their substance. If these ones could minister to him that day, you can still minister to him today of your substance. And this is the way the kingdom of God functions. This is the way the kingdom of God functions. How are you ministering in the house of God? Your finances ought to be involved. Does God guide your heart? Are you ever guided of the spirit of God to do something? Now this is so important. You see, in the house of God, you are either, you're either functioning in a way that encourages the ministry or you're functioning in a way that fights the ministry. And ensure in your own life that you're doing things that bring glory to God. Let let me explain to you how you do things that bring glory to God. Now, from time to time, you hear testimonies. Now, do things that produce testimonies. I think I should read something to you. Mm, 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 mm. It's important that you get this. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 14. Hurry there. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 14. Praise the Lord. I want to read to you from verse number 3. Are you there? Say yes if you are. Thank you. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. Now Simon was a leper. Now they called him Simon the leper. Jesus healed him of his leprosy. Hallelujah. Yeah, as he sat at meat, he sat there eating, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment and of spikenard, very precious. Now, the word precious comes from a word that means very costly. Now, some of your translations will actually have the word costly. Am I right? Good. Very costly. And, the, and she break the box and poured it on his head. And there were some. Watch. This is beautiful. Look at verse 4. And there were some that had indignation within themselves. And said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence. Now, that that was a lot of money then. And have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. Imagine what we could have done with this. And she came to waste it on Jesus. The Bible says they had indignation. And they murmured against her. Guess what? They were his disciples. Watch. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She had wrought a good work on me. Another translation says, she had wrought a beautiful work on me. For ye have the poor which you always. And whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me, ye have not what? Always. In other words, the opportunity 
to minister or help the poor. He says it's always there. But let me tell you, the opportunity for salvation is not every is not always there. It is now, today. Are you hearing this? Today is the day of salvation. He never tells you tomorrow. He says, you don't have me always. Why? Now, I I guarantee you this. Now, this is so important. You've got to understand this. You've got to understand this. Understand this. He says, watch it. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever you will, you may do them good. Do them good. But me ye have not always. She had done what she could. She came, or she is come beforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she had done shall be spoken of her for a memorial of her. See, the Lord, you, you have to understand when the Lord is teaching you a principle in the kingdom of God. He's letting you understand that there are works that are bound and that abide. There are works that give glory to God continually. And this woman's work, he says, everywhere the gospel shall be preached, this thing that this woman did shall also be mentioned. And I tell you, in every generation since then of the church, everywhere the gospel is preached. Like, we're talking about her now. Talking about her now. Do works that abide, that will continually give God glory. I'll explain that. This woman did something. That was significant. It was significant enough to get the attention of the disciples. It was significant enough to get the attention of the master. That's the kind of thing you should do in your life. Never stay alone on that thing which only God can say. Or only God can see. For the Bible says, let men see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. Don't remain in that work that only God can see. Do the works that will give him glory. Let me explain. In your giving, continually, see, this is given now. In your giving, continually give and expect God to increase your capacity to give until you give such that produce testimonies. Because those testimonies are the ones that abide. 